Have you ever wondered what happens to the paper you toss into the recycling bin? From newspapers and notebooks to packaging and office documents, we use paper every day, often without thinking twice about where it ends up. But paper recycling is more than just a way to reduce waste. It's a critical process that helps conserve trees, save energy, and reduce pollution. In today's video, we're diving deep into how paper is recycled. You'll learn where it goes after you recycle it, what happens during the recycling process, and how it returns to our shelves in the form of new paper products. Let's explore, right here, on History of Simple Things. It all begins when we dispose of paper waste into recycling bins. From homes, schools, offices, and businesses, recyclable paper is collected by waste management companies or local municipalities. These trucks gather the paper and transport it to a materials recovery facility, commonly known as a MRF. At the MRF, the contents of recycling bins are sorted. Machines and workers separate paper from other recyclables like plastic, glass, and metal. This is a crucial step because contamination such as grease, food residue, or plastic film can ruin the recycling process. That's why only clean and dry paper should go in your recycling bin. Once the paper is separated and sorted, it's grouped into types newspapers, cardboard, office paper, and mixed paper. These categories are baled together using compacting machines, creating large rectangular blocks of paper waste. These bales are then shipped to paper mills, where the real transformation begins. Upon arrival at the mill, the paper bales are broken apart and sent into a massive vat called a pulper. Imagine a giant blender filled with water and chemicals, the old paper is stirred and agitated in this vat until it breaks down into individual fibers, creating a slurry known as pulp. This pulp mixture is still far from clean, though. It contains ink, glue, staples, and bits of plastic coatings. To purify the pulp, it goes through a cleaning and screening process. First, Mechanical screens filter out large contaminants. Then through a process called de-inking, chemicals and air bubbles are used to remove ink from the fibers. This is done using flotation tanks where the ink rises to the surface and is skimmed off. In some cases, bleaching agents are added to lighten the pulp, especially if the goal is to create white paper products. After cleaning, the pulp may be mixed with some amount of virgin wood fibers to increase its strength, especially for higher quality paper products. The pulp is then ready to be turned into new paper. It's spread out over a wide mesh screen, allowing water to drain through and fibers to interlock. This wet sheet then travels through a series of rollers and heated cylinders that press and dry it, forming a continuous sheet of paper Depending on the final product, this paper may be coated, cut, or rolled into large reels. Recycled paper can become a wide variety of new products. Newspapers, cardboard boxes, paper towels, egg cartons, notebook paper, and even insulation material. The type of paper it becomes depends on the original paper type and the quality of the pulp. For instance, recycled office paper can become high-grade paper again, while recycled newspaper might be used to make packaging or molded fiber products. Interestingly, some paper like pizza boxes or heavily coated paper is harder to recycle due to grease or plastic lamination. These are usually filtered out during the early sorting phase or sometimes sent to composting or waste to energy facilities. So why is paper recycling so important? First, it reduces the number of trees that need to be cut down. While paper is biodegradable, 
and made from a renewable resource, the demand for fresh paper products can lead to deforestation. Recycling helps ease that pressure. Second, recycling paper uses significantly less water and energy compared to producing paper from raw wood. It also produces fewer greenhouse gas emissions. According to the EPA, recycling one ton of paper saves more than 17 trees, 7,000 gallons of water, and enough energy to power the average home for six months. Despite these benefits, not all paper is recycled. Globally, only about 60% of paper gets recycled, although some countries like Germany or South Korea have much higher rates. Improving education on what types of paper can be recycled and making recycling systems more accessible are key to increasing those numbers. Contamination remains one of the biggest challenges a greasy takeout box or a paper cup with plastic lining can contaminate an entire batch of recycling. So, being mindful of what we toss into the bin makes a big difference. Paper recycling isn't perfect, and even recycled fibers can only be reused around five to seven times before they become too short to bond into new paper. At that point, they're usually composted or used in low-grade products like insulation. Still, each cycle of reuse delays the need for virgin materials and helps reduce the overall environmental footprint of paper production. It's a cycle of renewal, one where each of us plays a part simply by making the right choice at the bin. So, the next time you toss a newspaper, cereal box, or sheet of used office paper into the recycling bin, remember, you're not just throwing something away. You're contributing to a cycle that reduces waste, saves trees, conserves energy, and cuts down on pollution. Paper recycling might seem like a small act, but it plays a massive role in building a more sustainable world. Although recycled fibers can only be reused a handful of times, Every cycle delays the need for fresh resources and helps protect our environment. By understanding how paper is recycled, we become more mindful of what we consume and discard. And by recycling the right way, clean, dry, and uncontaminated, we ensure the process stays effective. Your small action adds up with millions of others to create real positive change. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.